morning everyone. I'm up here on the top of Stone Mountain with my nephew Christopher and we decided that we would do a little Bible study for you, take a few minutes. Uh, kind of like I wanted to make this fun uh, so I'm going to talk about what it means to follow Jesus and we're going to use four different shirts because we wear many shirts in our walk with God and, and the Bible says that we should be clothed in Jesus so we're going to do a little shirt thing and uh, the Bible lesson is going to be on on the how the different colors of the shirt represent a different aspect of our Christian walk and we're going to start off with the red shirt but before I get started I want to say a little prayer and, uh, and pray that I'm able to uh, communicate what God has laid on my heart the best that is possible and I want to thank all y'all for joining me dear Heavenly Father I just thank you for today Lord and thank you for this time to get out in nature and and to, to see the, the glory of your creation God and I pray for everyone listening God to this video that that you would open their hearts and minds up to what you have to say to them and Lord uh, I just pray that you would give me the words to say that would bring glory to you and, and honor to the Christian life, God. Uh, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Okay, what we're going to do, you see that I have this shirt on. And at my church in Florida, we, we wear these shirts and it represents that we're on a team. As Christians we're on team Jesus and being on team Jesus means that we we are represent Jesus Christ and and what the ministry that he started means and uh, we're gonna start with the red shirt and I wrote down a few little verses to, to talk about on each shirt and on the red shirt I, I it represents the blood of Jesus and, and what it, and how important it is to our lives and uh, I kind of started this off a little different than than most people would think they would think that you would start off with a verse about the blood but I'm going to talk about the Word of God because it's where the uh, reading the Word of God is where we learn about every aspect of the Christian walk and about the blood of Jesus but it, this is an important verse about the Word of God. Hebrews 4.12 says that, For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. You know, the, the, it says that the Word of God is quick and powerful. It's... Uh, it's convicting to our lives, and uh, it, it discern the words that God talks about in His Word. They they discern even our very thoughts and intents that we have in life. So we need to make sure that we're in the Word of God to make sure that our thoughts and intents are pleasing to God. But uh, in the middle of the verse, it talks about it, it being dividing asunder even to the joints and the marrow and this is where I brought in the aspect of blood I googled uh, a, a, a medical site and asked about marrow and it, and on that site it told me that our blood cells that that are in that are our body survives on blood that they are formed in the marrow of our bones you know and, and I think about this a lot because I give blood and I've been doing it all my life and it's funny they take a pint of your blood out but then your body makes a new blood so it's just something that uh, that God thinks about his creation even to the depths of where where blood comes from and um, we learn about the importance of, of blood in Leviticus 17, 11. It says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. I have given unto you upon the altar an atonement for your souls. It is, 
It is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. And, you know, it's important that we talk about the, our blood, how important it is for our body to survive with blood in it. But, you know, the God, um, in His forgiveness, He, he sought that the shedding of blood would, um, would be an atonement for the soul. And I looked up the Hebrew word for atonement, and it's, it's called call, call far. Uh, it's K-A-P-H-A-R. It means to cover, to make an atonement, cleanse, forgive, mercif to be merciful, pacify, pardon, and to, or to reconcile. And it, that's amazing, you know, because you look in that, that this verse in Leviticus, they sacrificed bulls and rams and a spotless lamb to, for their sin sacrifices. But uh, in the Hebrew, it says it's to cover. And, and God never intended those kind of sacrifices to completely take away our sin. But they were only a covering for, for the sins of, of, of Israel. Because every year, the, the high priest would, would sacrifice for the nation and for the people and for himself. And they would have to do it again every year. But then the Bible goes into the New Testament in Hebrews 9.22, and he says, And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without the shedding of blood there is no remission of, for sin. And um, the difference between how the, the sacrifice in the Old Testament and then the sacrifice that Jesus did for us in the New Testament and shed his blood on the cross for us is that the that the the Greek word for remission refers to the blood as as creating freedom, deliverance, forgiveness. It's to provide liberty. It means to release one's sins from the sinner. You know that's a, that that's amazing that um, an atonement meant just to cover. But, but the remission of sins, the shedding of Jesus' blood gives us the remission of our sins. It does not no longer connect the sin to the sinner. It separates it. And uh, that's an amazing thing it's because we're freed by the blood of Jesus to live a life that's not dominated by sin. And we know this is true because in Romans chapter 6 it says, that says if we believe in Jesus Christ, then sin will no longer have dominion over us. And uh, it's very important to, to believe that, that Jesus Christ died and shed his blood for your sins on the cross. Because it not only forgives your sins, but it separates your sins from you. So when God looks at you and you're under the blood of Jesus, he does not connect your sins to you because they're forgiven and uh, you know the one of the great things that I remember when Jesus started his ministry he was walking down to the Jordan River and he seen John the Baptist down there baptizing people and when John the Baptist looked up he said behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world you know God when Jesus shed his blood for us his blood removed our sins from us it takes away the sins of the world and then and, and god meant his plan of salvation for everybody not just for the jews and uh it doesn't matter what race you are what ethnic background you are what country you live in uh, jesus christ died for you and he shed his blood for you uh, and uh, i wrote down hebrews 10 10 it says by the which will we we are sanctified through the body of Jesus Christ once for all. See, in the Old Testament, they would have to do sacrifices every year. Now, when Christ came and died on the cross, all, this, all, uh, all the sins of, of everybody that would ever be born and ever live in this world were taken care of in that one sacrifice of Jesus Christ. 
and we're going to leave it at that and we're going to go on to the next phase of our what it means to be be in jesus the blood of jesus covers our sins and then we're going to wear a different shirt we're going to wear the black shirt and uh this aspect of uh of uh our walk with christ symbolizes that that we're going to let this color represent darkness or sin and the bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god and um you know god didn't want god doesn't want to punish people for their sins everybody thinks that god is 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 just a god of wrath and and uh that he's up there judging everybody and he's ready to 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 pass judgment on them but that's not true the bible says in romans 5 8 that God demonstrates his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So it doesn't matter what sin you're involved in or, or, or how, how, much, how dark you, you may feel your life is. God loves you and, and uh, he's demonstrating that love through Jesus Christ and by Jesus Christ dying for you. And... The, the dark shirt represents another phase of our Christian life that, that God has brought us from. It says in 1 Peter 2.9, it says, But ye are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You know, I like I like this these, these terminologies, the chosen generation, because once in the Bible the children of Israel were captive to Egypt, and and God brought them out of Egypt, and and He took them in the wilderness, and in the wilderness He fed them and gave them drink and water, and He did a lot of mir miraculous things to deliver them from from the Egyptians, but you know they grumbled. And, and, and at one point, they, when they got up to the, the, the promised land that God had promised them that they could go into, uh, they sent some spies in, and ten of them came back with a, a bad report, and two said, we can, we can win the battle and we can go into the promised land. Well, because they grumbled and complained and everything, that generation wandered and, and they died off. But when Joshua and Caleb's generation went into the, they got to go into the, the new land. And, uh, you know, as Christians, we're a chosen generation. You know, we grumble and we complain and, and we do things wrong. And, and, but, you know, God still loves us. And because of Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us, we can still enter into that promised land. I don't know if any of y'all realize, but that any moment that you're alive on this earth, if you're hearing the gospel and you're hearing that Jesus Christ died for you and you know you're a sinner and you feel in your heart, wow, I need to do something about my life because I want, I want God to accept me and I want, I want to experience heaven and I want to, because that's God's promise to us. He gives us eternal life. Jesus said, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. And that's not just life here on earth. That's life beyond the earth. You know, he gives us eternal life. And it starts the moment that we put our faith in him. And uh, in fact, in Jesus said in John 8, 12, And then Jesus spake again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that believeth in me shall not walk in dark darkness, but shall have the light of life. You know, uh, we're, God called us out of darkness, we learned in 1 Peter 2, 9, and he offers us a light in the light, and, and a life that's free of the power of sin. We talked about what the blood of Jesus does. The blood of Jesus breaks that power of sin in our life, and it gives us the freedom to live for God. And... Uh, it says in, in 1 John 1, 7, But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, 
clean, his son cleanseth us from all sin. You know, God has called us out of darkness. He's quit. He, he, he told us that we shouldn't walk in darkness. We shouldn't serve sin. And if we walk in the light and obey him and, and live a life of faith-filled obedience, I like to say that because my pastor says it all the time, and it's really wearing into my soul to, to say that. But if we live a life with through our faith in Jesus Christ and in our obedience to him, then the Bible says that we'll walk in the light. And it says that he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it, and it, it also says that we'll have fellowship with one another. You know, that's a good thing uh, to talk about in today's world when you see there's so much division among people and people are, are fighting and arguing and not agreeing on anything. But when you walk in the light of Jesus Christ, you have fellowship. You have something that you have in common and that you can share with each other and you can get along. And, uh, and, it, and God says he'll cleanse us from all sin. You know, we won't hurt each other. And, you know, God has called us to live a life of peace. And uh, so this, is, this concludes the black shirt. And we're going to go to the next phase in our life with Jesus, that we wear a green shirt. You know, Jesus, the blood of Jesus forgave us of our sins, broke the power of sin. And the blood of Jesus helps us not to walk in darkness, but to walk in the light. But the green shirt represents growth. And, uh, you know, when you first become a Christian, you, it's a new beginning in life. And uh, the Bible says that, that it says in 1 Peter 2, 2 and 3, it says that as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if ye... Be, if so, be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You know, we, we find out about the goodness of God when we look into his word. And we learn to grow. It says to desire the sincere milk of the, of the word that you may grow thereby. You know, that, that the re, our relationship with God and Jesus Christ is a growing relationship. We're always learning about Jesus. Jesus said himself, he said, learn of me. And uh, we're, part of our, our Christian walk is, is learning as much as we can about how Jesus lived his life and the things that he did because we want to be like Jesus. And uh, another verse is 2 Peter 3.18. It says, but to grow in grace... And in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to him be glory both now, forever and ever. Amen. And uh, we're growing in the grace of God because we realize that God has been gracious to us. Uh, like it said in, in 1 Peter 2, 2 and 3, it says that, that the Lord is gracious. You know, that's what grace is in our lives. Is, is It's the graciousness of God. How He's forgiven us. How he's, He has a plan for our life. And, and, and what He's called us from. He's called us from a life that was once controlled by sin and darkness. And we just did any, anything we wanted to do without His, his governing our actions. But now we're, we're in a life of freedom from that. And... Uh, I like what it says in Isaiah 53, 6. It says that, that we all, all we like sheep have gone astray. But er, and every man has turned to his own way. And he hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. You know, we used to live our life any old way we wanted. But now we desire to please God. And, it, and we got to grow and, and learn what it means to be in a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And, and then right here it says to grow in His grace. God's a very gracious God. He doesn't just save us and then say you're on your own. He helps us every step along the way. He helps us for every, every shirt we change into. 
And you know, you can actually wear all the shirts and still you're, you're doing what God wants you to do. You're, you're wearing all the shirts at one time. But I'm going to go, to make it as simple as possible, I'm going to go to the last shirt. And, and it's, the, it's the gray shirt. And uh, this is the last shirt. It symbolizes a different aspect of our Christian life. And I want, I want, this is interesting because there's no, there's no verses in the Bible that say the word gray. And a lot of people think, wow, how's he going to use that? Well, you know, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 1, 5 and 6, it says, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. You know that I'm, I'm going to read the next verse, but I'm going to stop right there because a lot of people think, well, gray shirt. Well, well how do, how does gray re, um, uh, relate to darkness and light? You know, with God, if 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 He is light and in Him is no darkness at all, then there are no gray areas in life with God. Everything's either light or darkness with God. And if we're walking in the light of Jesus, then there, we're not going to go through gray areas in our life. We're, we're going we're gonna to be in tune with our walk with God, and we're going to be walking in the light. God doesn't say you walk into a gray area. You know, He, he says you walk in the light, and we will not walk in darkness. You know, God is light, and in Him is, in, is no darkness at all. So we, that requires us to depend fully on God and to learn the difference between good and evil. And a lot of people, um, you know, they don't, they, they think of good and evil on their own terms, but we look to the Word of God, which tells us the difference between good and evil. It says, if we say that we have fellowship with Him, and we walk in darkness, and we then we lie and do not the truth. You know, we can't we can't live for God and purposely do wicked stuff and 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 say we're living for Him. He wants us to to turn away from rick, wicked things in our lives and follow Him. That's what Jesus wants us to do, and His blood uh, gives us the freedom to do that. And uh, it says in, in John 16, 8, uh, I, I wrote this down because this is what God did for us when, when, he, when Jesus saves us. The, the Bible says that, that God puts his spirit in us and writes his laws on our heart, and we do them. And, uh, but how he does this is, is, is he puts the Holy Spirit of God in us. And I, I took John 16, 8 because it talks about the comforter that Jesus said he would send. And he said, this is what the comforter does for us. It says, and when he has come, he will reprove the world of sin. You know, he, tell, he proves to, what, uh, to us as people what is right and what is wrong. And it says, and... Of righteousness and that way the, the the Word of God tells us that the Holy Spirit teaches us also what is righteous and of judgment you know we warn people of the judgment to come so and we tell them about Jesus Christ so that they won't have to face a judgment like that and uh, you know the Bible says that how we deal with sin is that we have to repent of it. It's not just simply saying, God, I'm sorry for the wrong things I've done, but that that I, I, I am so sorry for the wrong things I've done, Lord, that I want to, to, to quit doing them, and I want to live the way you want me to live. And, and we invite Jesus into our lives, actually, because the Bible says in John 1, 12, it says, But as many as received him, gave he the power to become sons of God. So 
we receive Christ in our lives, we receive the forgiveness that he gives us, we receive the power and the ability to not walk in darkness, but to walk in the light. And we also, uh, God renews our mind so that we can grow in our knowledge of him. And, 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 he, and he reminds us that there's no gray areas with him. That, that, that there is a way that God wants us to live that is, that is pure. And, and, and righteous and that's through Jesus Christ so we always we always seek to, to live for Jesus Christ I hope that I've said something that will help you in your Christian walk I, I like I said I use these shirts as an analogy to show you different aspects of our Christian walk and you know what when you when you join team Jesus each one of these shirts has on the back of it let me see if I can get this in there, Chris. It says Christian. You know, that's what we that's what we call ourselves Christians because we're desiring to be like Jesus. We're desiring to be like Christ. You know, Acts eleven twenty six says that that in Antioch they first uh, began to call the followers of Jesus Christians, and uh, ever since the the church began in the book of Acts. We've been called Christians, or the follower of the way is what they started off uh, calling us. So if you carry the name of Jesus Christ around with you, you're a Christian. And uh, God has a plan for your life, and he has given you the power to, to, to live a life that, that glorifies him and represents his kingdom. I want to thank you for this little time in God's word, I, and, and God bless you all. And you have a great day. You can, we're going to stop right there.